Hi, I'm Rick Rasby, Beef Specialist here at the University of Nebraska. Today I'd like to visit with you about uh, grazing corn stalks and because of the drought this year, uh, there may be livestock producers, especially cow-calf producers, that, that maybe haven't sourced or grazed, life, or grazed uh, corn stalks here uh, in the most recent years. But due to the drought and due to the limited feed supplies we out, have out here, uh, that may be a consideration for you this year. And I'd just like to maybe go over a checklist for you to consider as you think about sourcing some corn stalks for your cattle this fall and this winter. The thing is, is maybe to find corn stalks, and there are plenty of corn stalks in Nebraska that are not grazed that may be available this year for grazing. You may talk to your extension educator to help you source some of those corn stalks at, at not only around your location, but maybe uh, some distance from your location. And if you have to do go some distance from your location, I think there's some checklist items that you might want to think about as you begin visiting with someone uh, about renting their corn stalks, if you're the cow-calf producer, and if, even if you're the, uh, the owner of the uh, corn stalk residue. Uh, the thing is, is once you get uh, the uh, corn stalks sourced, um, uh, things that you might want to think about is making sure that both parties have contact information. Not only contact information of the livestock owner, but also of the crop residue owner. And if there's a third party person involved in there that may have rented a bunch of corn stalks in an area and is going to make those available to a cow-calf producer to graze, if that third party person is in there as well, make sure that you have uh, the contact information for that person as well. The other thing is, is probably contact information for the veterinarian would be pretty important. The other thing would be is how do you price, uh, what's a fair price for corn stalks? And boy, that's about a $100,000 question there. But uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, there'll be a number of people that will be in the area that will have uh, uh, either rented corn stalks or are leasing corn stalks. And, and there'll be a, a price that's probably uh, made uh, due to the availability of corn stalks in that area that you'll be able to find out from other producers or even the extension educator will, will be able to help you with that. Once you uh, get uh, the corn stalks uh, rented, if you will, how will payment be made and, and make sure that those things are worked out prior to the time that the cattle end up on the, on the residue field. Most corn stalks are going to be rented by the acre. Um, this year there'll probably be a number of corn stalks that are rented by the uh, day as well. And, and when you rent them by the acre, basically you have them for a grazing season. When you rent them by the day, uh, basically it means that you're paying as long as you have a corn stalks available, then you pay a day charge, if you will. Um, so that'd be how they, how they, uh, how they are uh, priced. Uh, conditions that uh, the uh, agreement may be terminated, uh, maybe there, make sure that you have that in writing as well, or at least there's an agreement there. And, uh, and basically you want to make sure that uh, if there's things like water availability becomes a concern that that may be one of the reasons for termination. Um, date of entry and uh, uh, date of removal. How long will corn stalks be grazed? And uh, that's at least in our uh, uh, data would say that that's a function of uh, yield, of corn yield. Uh, we have a corn stock grazing calculator that you can find on beef.unl.edu. Just click onto the learning modules and you'll see corn stock grazing calculator. And that gives uh, days of grazing based on corn yield and that would be the, info, or the resource that we'd have you go to just to make sure that uh, you, know, you know how long uh, so many cows can stay on this many acres of corn stalks. And so basically that will also help you determine, once you have an end date determined, that will probably also, also help you determine when the out date uh, will occur as well. Who's responsible for checking the cattle, fencing, how will water be uh, provided, uh, who checks and breaks water, we know will be in the winter time, so that's going to be um, uh, something that we need to think about. Uh, who will refill salt and mineral, especially if uh, the cattle owner is some ways away from where the cattle are and who determines when supplement is needed. And so make sure that you work through those kinds of things um, prior to the time that you get the cattle on the, uh, onto the uh, stock field. Uh, if the cattle get out, uh, who's going to help gather? That might be a, uh, hopefully cattle won't get out, but in, typically if they're uh, trained to an electric fence, and that's what we typically would use, uh, cattle don't get out. Uh, will the cattle be co-mingled with another set of cattle? That would be something that you'd want to talk about prior to the time that your cattle arrive uh, at that particular stock field. Emergency feed resource. If there happens to be a blizzard or a snowstorm, 
and the cattle are on the stock field still and those stocks become covered up, is there an available uh, uh, emergency feed resource? Make sure that those kinds of things are worked out uh, prior to the time that you get your cattle uh, onto a crop residue field. And uh, who provides that? Uh, where is it provided at? And then who feeds that as well? Once the cattle arrive at the crop residue field, um, once they're done grazing, who lines up the trucking either to move to a new field or to take the cattle back to the owner? These are just some items that I'd have you think about when you think about sourcing and uh, working with a producer that may not be close to you, uh, a crop producer that may not be close to you if you want to graze crop residues this winter.